Silverdale Farm is one of Australia's most beautiful and progressive thoroughbred properties, producing elite racehorses such as 2022 Golden Slipper winner Fireburn. Steve and Eliza Grant are passionate about the horses they breed and they've returned many of them to the farm over the years. And they're just as passionate about creating that love in a new generation of stud staff with their Silverdale Academy internships. This is just a magnificent showpiece property, isn't it? Silverdale Farm. And in a, in a short space of time, you've made it into just a fabulous place for horses to, to be born, to be raised, and then to return to after their racing days. Yeah, very much so, Carolyn. It's been a labour of love because it's something I've done um, most of my life in construction and building horse facilities for other people. So it's just great to be able to design your own, particularly with the help of Rob, who's our um, manager. And he and I put a lot of work in the design and then through the execution and coming up with the right product that works very much for the horse and for the handler. So there's considerations for safety and efficiency and making it just so it's a place where everyone's happy. The horses are happy and the staff are happy. And you have a real passion for caring for horses when they finish their racing days. Yeah, very much so. It really is such a vital part of, of the thoroughbred racing and breeding industry, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. For us, um, you know, we're selling yearlings and um, when we uh, present those yearlings, we want them to be the favourite then. And as Eliza puts it, right through their life. So the favourite on the track, and we want them to be the favourite after the track. So it's really educating the horse for their life uh, at a sale, when they get into to the breaker, uh, and when they go to the trainer, and through their life, and then when they're finished. If you can imagine someone turning up and one horse is well behaved and everything else, they're gonna choose them. And we want the person to take that horse home, treat them with their, uh, as a friend, and work with the horse, enjoy their equine activities, whether it be show jumping or lead classes or whatever it happens to be, to be um, and that horse will be the favourite. So it's, it's great for us when we sell a horse and we get a report from the breaker and I can't tell you how many times it happens, Rob will ring up and say, have a look at this report and the, and the breaker says, this is my favourite horse. Or the trainer says, he's a real favourite in the yard. And it's obvious that if you've got that horse that is the favourite in the yard, they're going to get a, a handler that looks after them and cares for them and be great friends with them. So for us, educate them at the start, right the way through, so that they end up being the favourite. And you have a couple of really good uh, rehoming stories. I mean, Hot and Soxy is this lovely mare, a uh, half-sister of Auckland's Bay, who we'll look at very shortly. But she had seven starts, no placing. She won $575. And, and you actually sold her. But tell us the story of how you came to bring her home. Yeah, so um, Eliza raced her with a group of uh, 10 friends. She didn't perform that well, so we, um, we sold her to a country trainer. And off she went to sort of continue her career in, in an area where she might be able to earn a bit of prize money for the new owners, etc. Anyway, it was a couple of years later that uh, a friend, Nicole, who works for Laurel Oak, uh, rang and said that she'd noticed her in a, uh, a, an auction that was up at Cairns. And uh, she didn't have much of a reserve and wasn't even going to make that. So um, I put together a plan that we'd buy her. I'd bring her back for Eliza to have as a, as a, a horse on the farm. Uh, so we kept her for a few weeks and tidied her up and had her very presentable. And um, I got all the payments back in one go when I asked Liza to walk down to the bottom paddock and have a look what was down there. You could see when she stopped and re recognised her to who it was and then came running back with the tears rolling down her eyes that I'd, I'd got Hot and Soxy back for her. So um, she had a home for life here, but, um, and Liza was keen to breed from her. So although she didn't win a race, we put her in foal and now she's got a, a colt um, by Tosin Starden and uh, Gary Portelli's training and his name is Fire Alarm. So uh, we'll see how it goes and, and you got some vision earlier today um, of her new foal by Star Witness. We love the horse, you'd hate anything to sort of go wrong, so you know you want to make sure that you're taking care of them. And that's what I say in our training process, you know, when they're, when they're weanlings and when they're going through for yearling education. We're very much conscious of the fact that we want that horse to be trained for life. So it's a whole of life experience. 
Vaucluse Bay in front from Rakik. It's Vaucluse Bay still in front. What one tough victory that. And the other horse, the half brother to Hot and Soxy, Vaucluse Bay, a year younger, and he was kind of the opposite of her in his racing career. He won seven of 52 and placed 20 times and earned over $750,000. What were your thoughts at that time? He was a loyal servant to us, and that's probably the bottom line. When it got to the point that um, he was getting a little bit tired of racing, uh, it wasn't a hard decision um, for us, you know, particularly with that family, to bring him home and um, find a new job for him. And that new job is, uh, is a nanny. And he's doing a great job. You know, some of the vision you got earlier today of, uh, of how those uh, fillies that he's, he's with now um, respect him and they'll, they'll just follow him anywhere and do anything. It's the craziest thing when you when you tell some people that you know a lot of the times the geldings make the best nannies. Yeah. <laughs> but to see the way they they rule um, the land and the, they educate those young horses that you're not okay to stand in the water trough or not okay to do this yeah. and um, they really take to their jobs the ones that that know um, do know and and uh, his mother power of love she was a nanny and until she finished and uh, she was in charge of the girls one year and he was in charge of the boys. Brilliant, brilliant yeah. stuff. Great and, he, and he really looks healthy. And, and it's really great. The yards you have, which we've actually filmed up at Darley Stud, and it's really clever to be able to examine all those foals as they come in yeah. and, and really look at them carefully. Plus the important thing for your nanny yeah. is that he's not getting too fat eating all their high, high sort of energy food yeah. and foundering or anything like that. Tell us about that. So um, I, I noticed that on um, an Instagram shot one day and rang up Alistair and asked he and, uh, and Barley Ward Thomas about it. With yearlings, it's that thing for us. Like, yes, you can get the competition when you're feeding them uh, out in a paddock, but it's not the competition you want for that horse. You want them comp comp competing to run and, and gallop together. To me, you know, the feeding parts are such a science that you've, you've got to give it to them as an individual. It was a good investment because you get to see that horse at close quarters four times a day. So that's what we have now for our yearlings. And of course, for Borkaloos Bays and the other nannies, it's great. We can keep them on a strict diet, keeps him healthy and he looks great. It adds for a long life for him. Enjoyable life too. Success is a different thing for each person. So I say the best measure of success is contentment. So everyone aims for something different. So if you want to be the richest guy in the world, it's going to be a hard road. But if you want to find that contentment point where you set yourself some goals and you want to work with horses or you want to be the best rider or that sort of thing, it's up to yourselves to set that. You're talking about sort of a whole of life approach and that includes humans. So your, your Silverdale Farm Academy, you're training up these young interns or students who are coming here in collaboration with TAFE, which is fabulous. So tell us a bit more about what we saw today. So you you addressed um, the, the students and then we saw um, Alistair Henskins, who's the, the state member for everything from sports, skills, enterprise, everything. And it was fabulous to see him and Nathaniel Smith down here as well, who's the local me member in Wallandilly, and Wendy Tuckerman from Goulburn. I mean, it's so important what you're doing with the students, but to show politicians that our industry is really looking towards the future. Yeah, it's it's very much important to um, to keep the industry going through, to have uh, to invest in training, and that's one thing the minister was interested in. Is is from our point of view, what started us? How, how did we think it was our responsibility? I think if you go back on my history and my time with TAFE, you know, I needed to lose leave school, I had to get out. It's highly important to have staff coming through, but also to pass on that knowledge and, and to give kids the opportunity to do something other than go for those jobs of a lawyer or a doctor, how good they are. But there's kids that aren't suited to that. Like I wasn't suited to it at all. And, and this is our part of doing that and, um, and passing on that, that knowledge in the industry. And it's a great opportunity for kids that their parents as well don't know is available. Our industry is the third largest employer in Australia. And they've got so many jobs from horticulture to track maintenance to event management to media to all sorts of things. Not only horses themselves, but we, we don't tell people. And this is what it's up to us to do as an industry to expand that knowledge and to expand that training and provide the opportunities. And it'll come back to us as far as providing people that will work for us in the future. So for instance, my background as a builder, all the apprentices were employed by the master builders. They would have one employer, but they would go and work for a number of different builders. Well, maybe we should be doing something like that where we can provide employment that's consistent, they keep their award conditions and things and they, they retain their sick leave etc etc in their holidays but they work for a number of different trainers so they might work for someone for three to six months, might work for someone else for 12 months. The trainer gets to work out who he likes working with as far as their, their staffing is concerned but they retain the same employer. 
So it's a great system and we'll see if it works in our industry. And we've got great, great people like uh, Antoinette Inglis, for instance, who comes to do our, um, our night watch. And uh, it was great to see her here today, still working. But, you know, kids that start off here and, and work through our system, it, it's a good system and it works well. It's, it's the whole of the industry's responsibility and I think you'll see us trying to bring that together. And whether um, we run Silverdale in five years, the academy, or the academy's passed on to someone else, we'll see where that ends up. But all we're looking to do is enhance the conditions for our industry and for those who look to train to, to be in it.